so before we have our conversation about the birth control trials in uh, Puerto Rico, let's have some background. Let's have some history. Okay. All right. So in the 1930s, Puerto Rico legalized contraception. Okay. It encouraged physicians to coerce women into receiving certain contraceptives and even sterilization based on their physical, mental, or socioeconomic status. Okay. The governor said that this was going to be the solution to overpopulation and poverty on the island. Okay. A mass opening of clinics occurred in January 1937 when American Dr. Clarence Gamble, heir to Procter and Gamble, he organized the Maternal and Infant Health Association and opened 22 birth control clinics. Okay. Now, Clarence Gamble was a supporter of eugenics. His Human Betterment League of North Carolina oversaw the forced sterilization of men and women, predominantly black and brown, without their consent. And his program didn't end until 1977. So the governor of Puerto Rico enacted Law 116, okay? Law 116 legalized sterilization, sometimes by force. And the government cited growing population of the poor and unemployed as motivators for the law. Okay? And additionally, changes were made to the penal code in 1937, and that legalized abortion. Okay? Here's the thing. It's very important to note that the United States decided that Puerto Rico had too many, uh, a growing population of poor and a growing population of unemployed, thereby justifying legalizing sterilization, birth control, and abortion. Remember, birth control and abortion were illegal in the United States during this time, okay? Forced sterilization were only reserved, was only reserved for those that were deemed unworthy of procreating. Okay. Puerto Rico, everything goes, citing a growing population of poor and unemployed, ignoring the fact that there was a growing population of poor and unemployed because of the colonization of the United States. The United States was the reason there was poverty at that level. Now the eugenicists seized on the resulting poverty, blaming over overpopulation and targeting poor women for sterilization and pharmaceutical experimentation. When doctors were preparing to sterilize a patient, they did not ask, they typically did not ask for consent. Coercion was used. It was very common. And I think it was Clarence Gamble, his, uh, his facilities, they would not accept a healthy pregnant woman for delivery unless she agreed to be sterilized afterwards. Even if a woman did agree to be sterilized, it was very likely that they did not understand that sterilization was permanent. There was a study done in 1968 that confirmed that over one third of Puerto Rican women did not understand that sterilization would be permanent. And I think it's more than just a language barrier. I think they were intentionally misled. In 1976, the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare reported that over 37% of women of childbearing age in Puerto Rico had been sterilized. The vast majority of them were in their 20s. 
And this law that went into effect in 1907, what is it, 1937, wasn't repealed until June 8th, 1960.